Okay, let's start it. Everybody hear me? Yeah, very good. Okay, I, I was already uh, originally starting this that ladies and gentlemen, but maybe, okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome and thank you for coming. Nice to see so many of you here. Hopefully someone else will still come Today we will give you a short talk about our long-lasting research project in the area of self-sovereign uh, decentralized identifiers. Our topics today are who we are, what we have accomplished, live demo, and then we will show how it's done, a little bit deep dive into the architecture and uh, technical details, not in the code level but something like that and finally where we are going next and uh, maybe if there's time left some GUI as well we come from a Finnish bank OP financier group it's uh, Finland's largest bank and we work there in the innovation lab it's a uh, for the emerging technologies and uh, some research as well. Uh, it changed it during the time a little bit, but uh, that is where we are. And uh, about uh, five, six years ago, first DLT projects were started and they were run in the area of real estate and stock exchange for non-listed stocks. And those blockchain experts, we are like a different people now, but then in five, six years ago, they started to learn that did uh, uh, decentralized identifiers could be something that could help a lot. And uh, about three and a half years ago, we started to study the subject from the, I could say, pragmatic and performance centric angles. And what it means, the pragmatic means that we try to find any road blockers or even deal killers that would prevent us to go to the production as a bank. So certain security issues and, and stuff like that were pretty important for us and the, the angle we took. About the actual project, uh, I'll show what differentiate our solution from the most of the other SSI agent. Uh, what, it, what makes it different? And there is a very long history behind of all of these decisions. We have tried a lot different approaches during the three and a half years. And we have used Aries and uh, Indy for the libraries and for the sp specifications. Uh, I could say even that more the specifications. And the trust triangle here is for more for the illustration purpose. And we we are not going to define DIT methods or DIT com or stuff like that in this presentation. We take them as a granted. Uh, but about our solution, it has been since the beginning multi-tenant, so that's the agency model. And uh, also all the agents are symmetric. They can be issuer, verifier or holder, it doesn't matter. Mm, um, maybe before I go to the next step, little bit water um, as I said we have a multi tenant agency with symmetric uh, agent model and also we did learn but we did very uh, many POCs and uh, use cases during this three year period but uh, we started to learn that we are not only building uh, applications or even um, frameworks or libraries, but 
we think that we are building system, so system software. And uh, if you are doing that, uh, you still need lots of lots of tools that you are able to maintain the fast-paced development cycles. So we say that we are building system software with batteries included. And uh, we did select CRPC API technology for mainly for two reasons. It gives us uh, certain technology uh, uh, agnostics. It is technology agnostic and uh, also allows us to be the, could you say, polyglot that uh, implementation and also clients can, can be written whatever language is appropriate for your case. Uh, we currently have uh, pick up this approach that we have a React-based web wallet which is using FIDO2 authenticators and authorization model is based the FIDO authenticators and also JOT tokens. Uh, we, even that we have taken these uh, little bit different approaches, we are uh, interoperable at the AIP 1.0 level and currently working for the 2.0. Uh, our version can be used without the lecture. Uh, it means that uh, we did learn that if you want to start something very fast, you want to start developer development very fast, and even run some POC or uh, some pilot which still doesn't need all the interoperability capabilities, you could do it with even the database or something like that. And um, it's actually helped us a lot. So you are capable to run the system without the ledger. Uh, I could summarize that our uh, solution or our architecture is uh, cloud-centric with a certain sovereign computing twist that you can easily install it the public cloud, what we have done, and it can be seen in the demo. But you could install it in the black box in your home or whatever, and it's there. And uh, later, later, we will explain more about that. Uh, next, we will see Laura's demo. And after that, as I said, a little bit more about how it's done. Yeah. Hi, all. My name is Laura, and I'm Harris' colleague from OP as well. And let's see, I'm going to try to show you Findy Agency and in action. So, live demo, exciting times. <laughs> uh, I'm going to use here the, the cloud installation of of Findy Agency. I'm just gonna find correct windows there, yeah. Uh, but I want to remind you that the, even though I'm showing you the, the instances that we are running in AWS currently, so, but all of this that I'm going to show you is open source. You can easily take them, the codes and the uh, ready-built um, Docker images from GitHub and run all of this same stuff in your local host computer and I recommend you to do so. Uh, so uh, Findy Agency is a full package uh, uh, for developers who wish to uh, implement applications that utilize credential in their, in their flows. So we have, like Harry said, this web wallet application. Actually, this React app that, that we have is kind of a, in a POC level, but it proves like the concept. So we, neither of us are proper <laughs> front-end developers, so we are, we are concentrating more on the back-end. But anyways, uh, I, I hope it demonstrates what we are going to, uh, what, what we are aiming to accomplish. Uh, the web wallet is intended for the individual users who can then uh, receive and prove credentials with the web wallet application. And then we have this extensive 
gRPC API, like Harry described, which is intended for any applications to manage and handle their cloud agent that is uh, that is hosted by our agency in the in the backend. Uh, and in addition to that, we have the CLI tool, which is also a handy handy tool for commanding your agent to do to do things that you wish. The agency is multi-tenant, so it can host several different agents uh, at the same time, and and it's quite convenient for the developer as you can uh, uh, start up one one instance of agency to your local host computer, and host there all of the different parties that you are testing with. So you can you can have your issuer there and and your uh, verifier there and your your individual users. So it's quite convenient. Uh, and as mentioned, we don't have a mobile application, even though you could easily use uh, the same approach that we are using this in this React application in a in a native application as well. So, so it's just a, like a static React application that is doing requests to the uh, backend, and the backend is doing all the hard and dirty work related to the credential stuff. So. So it's just a basic React application which utilizes the browser capabilities for this authentication that you, you will go into see soon. Uh, our name is Findi Agency, <laughs> and that's a bit misleading because we have in Finland, we have this uh, FindiNet Identity Network, which is a, a national identity network uh, project. Uh, we are not directly related to that project at all, we are a separate open source project, and, and, and you can take our software and run it with any indie ledger. It doesn't have to be the Findi ledger. So, so that's a misconception that we get a lot, but we don't have the strength and energy to change all of these, those 30 repositories names, so we are Findi agency now. <laughs> and, and like said, we are Hyperledger Aries compatible, so you can take Akapai and, and Findi agency and they can talk together quite nicely. Okay, but the demo, we, we will, uh, I will show you how to allocate the um, uh, cloud agent for the individual user uh, and register a new user account, how we can then log in with that user. And then of course the other side, so, so I will show you how to issue and verify credentials. And that we will do uh, with, the, with the bash script that will utilize this CLI tool of ours. And, and actually, we are going to run a simple chatbot. So, so we have this cool feature in the CLI tool that you can just write a bunch of YAML definition and, and the CLI tool will start up the chatbot for you, which can then utilize credentials in, in its uh, dialog flows. So, so we will see an example of that. Yeah, and the story, I'm, I'm s sorry to disappoint you all, but we are going to meet Alice again. <laughs> and, and again, she's uh, uh, getting her degree from Faber and, and applying a job at ACME. But uh, maybe, maybe in the next Hyperledger Forum, uh, global forum, we, we will have new, new stories then. Okay, so here you can see my iPhone screen which is connected to the, to the computer. And, uh, and the first thing that we are, are going to do is, is uh, register a new, new account for uh, Alice to allocate her a new cloud agent. And I have, uh, this is Safari browser, so I have navigated to our uh, cloud installation uh, starting page. And there I can choose this register uh, option and figure out a unique, Username that I forgot to do before, <laughs> but let's try out if Alice dot Hyperledger works. And here, when I tap the register button, what what actually happens is that the the React application uses this Web Authn API in the browser, and 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 sends its its request to our authentication server and does this Fido to magic and actually binds our device authenticator, so my face ID to, to this newly created created uh, user. 
And like you see, it, it now asks me that do I want to use my face ID when I'm I, I create this account and I will tap continue. And yes, we have a new, new user account now. So what, what happens next is that I will copy this <laughs> username and refresh the page. Next time when I come to this uh, same, uh, same web application, I just type in the username and tap login. And again, I'm asked that do I want to sign in and use my face ID? And when I tap continue, I'm in, in the wallet application. We have no new connections yet, but that's the next step then. So let's meet Faber. Uh, I have Visual, Visual Studio Code here open, and uh, there I, I have written this kind of uh, simple YAML definition that defines that what kind of uh, messages uh, I want to send to the other end when I receive a new pairwise connection. And, and actually this, uh, this spot is then started in the, in the bash script. You, you don't probably see the text so, so uh, clearly, but it, it doesn't matter. But anyway, this bash script uses this CLI tool to launch this bot. So that is what, happening, what is happening here when I, when I run the script. So probably if I just type in here something like run. So what happened, happened here is that the, the CLI tool that I'm operating here in the local host computer connects to the cloud agent that we have alloc allocated already before in the cloud for this Faber organization. And it commands the, the the cloud agent to, to create an invitation uh, to it and, and then the, we print the, print the QR code uh, there in the terminal. And, and this is quite neat because uh, w when you have like the cloud, cloud installation of agency uh, available, uh, you can run this kind of uh, stuff in your local host uh, because of the gRPC API, you don't need tools like ngrok or so forth. So, so you don't have to expose an HTTP endpoint in your local host. So it's really, really convenient to test with the wallet application. So I have enjoyed that. But now uh, Alice connects with the Faber here. And instantly when we get a new connection, it opens the the connection view here in the in the uh, in the web wallet view, and and sends a bunch of messages to Alice. So 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 this is the doing of the chatbot that we are running here in our local host uh, computer. It sends a bunch of basic messages that okay, con congratulations on your graduation and so forth, and then it sends a credential offer. And here, when we tap accept, we hopefully receive the credential in our wallet and uh, and we can see it here. I, I apologize that the layout is not as nice as the bifold wallet, <laughs> but, uh, but we are backend coders, so, <laughs> so that's it. Uh, then when we have the decree credential, we can verify it. So let's start the uh, Acme bot. And actually, same thing happens here. So, so we just uh, uh, add the new connection, and when we do that, uh, we get a bunch of new messages. And instead of uh, issuing a, a credential, we get a proof request. And and sorry about that. Yeah, layout missing. No. Yeah. So so the uh, Acme is uh, asking from us the degree attribute from the credential. And actually our, our wallet application know, knows that, okay, this proof is provable. We, we actually do have a, have a credential that, that can uh, prove this cre um, proof fulfill this proof request. And, and when we uh, tap accept, uh, the chatbot gets the, uh, 
gets the values and, and says that, okay, okay, uh, uh, proof request goes through and, and we have a valid degree from Piper College and, and we are on board at Acme Bank. And as said, uh, all of this uh, demo stuff can be found in the in our one of our repositories. So we provide you the links later on, but there are detailed detailed instructions how to run this same stuff in your local host. But now Harry will continue with the technical how we did it this all. <laughs> yeah, sure. First, I must find our presentation. Where it is. Yep. All right. Uh, thank you for Laura's excellent demo. Mm, maybe just a couple of things uh, before I go to the, these uh, architectural entities and stuff like that for example you saw the web wallet there during our history we have ha had native edge agent but we have thrown it away so uh, it's like an example that we have uh, take different roads during our our study so here is simplified deployment diagram and uh, a um, little bit more background uh, all the listed selected technologies which are in the right side they comes from our pragmatic approach that we have tried to build the simple and maintainable and also performant solution because uh, if you think that we are bank security is like uh, yeah it's it's mm -hmm. clear but uh, there, there was something that uh, triggered us to concentrate these things during during our research, and we also wanted to have something out of the box, and the FIDO was one of those. Uh, but yeah, during the project start, we did try to be orthodox in the SSI and DID principles that we had those those all agent types and stuff like that but then we started to ask questions and this is the current current solution what you are seeing here so in the actual deployment diagram you can see that it's a microservice uh, based we more concentrate to deployment stuff and uh, it uses uh, like uh, internal uh, security and ecosystem for the FIDO based authenticators and authorization. Authorization is done with JOT tokens. All these serv services communicate with, uh, uh, except the web wallet, uh, GRPC and TLS pipes, ordinary, ordinary stuff. Uh, about the web wallet and uh, GraphQL, there is this vault server that or service, and it's like uh, it's doing something which make uh, web wallet life easier. That uh, it doesn't have to handle all the verified credential in same level that you should have otherwise. Um, we have own API there. We we've, we've done. Uh, dive in that very carefully but uh, but that's actually its purpose we we have a little bit started to put different data to different places what is in the in the stk and before i mentioned hyperledger and indian areas a little bit that uh, yellow box which is the agency uh, it's built uh, three parts. Left the first is the FIDO2 authentication server. You could take it actually out of the box. We are the relying party. But we have written it uh, using the dual apps libraries. It, it was very straightforward thing to do. 
and then I also mentioned the vault, which is uh, like uh, doing the verified credential stuff uh, for the web wallet. And uh, in the middle, there is the, like the, could say whole thing. We run there our uh, Aries uh, protocol state machines. That is our core component, and it also handles all the multi-tenancy issues and stuff like that. And as I say, said all of these are communicating through the CRPC pipes and TLS. And also, it doesn't mean that it has to be the internal setup, but uh, in Laura's uh, demo, the communication actually really happened to this machine and our AWS installation where the agent is running. Uh, yeah, maybe a little bit, a little bit about the mm, core component. Uh, it's we started uh, uh, totally written writing it with uh, in the lead. I don't say hyperledger in the SDK because we didn't take all, but we took that one library. And we, for example, write our own wrapper for the Go. And uh, uh, lately we have, uh, we, oh, actually we started to follow the areas uh, RFCs, uh, those documents quite early. And now lately, when we are starting to approach the AIP 2.0, we took something from the Arias Go framework, but it wasn't so easy because it's framework, it's so opinionated. And we are also very opinionated. We have our own way to handle state machines and many, many other uh, stuff in the transport layers. So uh, it wasn't happy marriage at all. Mm, about the rest of the technologies, uh, uh, Laura already said that uh, we have Docker and Docker images. They are in public registry. They are available for every, everybody. And you can measure our performance, uh, not very formally, but if you go to the AATH server and you can compare, for example, what our agency do, when you run it towards itself and you watch other figures, what other agents do, you can draw your own conclusions, what happens there. And um, yeah, we have tried to build everything with minimal dependencies as well. And uh, maybe a little bit about the Go. Uh, because we selected for this project and it has been changing so, uh, during the project as well, but it's very good for distributed computing. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe before we go to the next slide, uh, I started a little bit explain why we did select the FIDO2 tuning the fonts here, sorry. But um, this actual diagram, it's taken from or stolen from Aries RFC, uh, I think it's cross domain communication and it's there quite many places. But we think that it's very important diagram because um, we also think that the identity domain model or identity domain concept is something that you should understand and you should think about. And this diagram uh, explains that uh, currently areas has many types of agents and they have many types of roles and Bob and Alice has almost similar setups. Bob has a little bit more uh, edge agents and also some dedicated cloud agents. But uh, we, we tried this as well. 
but uh, I'm I'm going to the point where I say that why we didn't take this approach. Uh, if you see what happens when uh, Alice sent a message back to Bob, and Bob's DIT document in this pairwise connection had this kind of road keys, that's the way how it goes. And uh, we don't think, uh, at least it's at very much complexity to stuff. And um, if we now think that how we we have uh, defined that for ourselves uh, at least, uh, we also think that identity domain is something you must have. That th that's the mapping you have from the you could say analog for world entities like organization, persons, uh, whatever legal entities to this di digital world. But we think that all of those uh, identity domain entities have one-on-one -on -one mapping to the digital world. And there has been some um, technical proofs for that as well. Uh, you, you have to have, uh, or if you think about the user experience, it's better that you have a 24-7 presence in the network Let's think about the case that you would have only edge agent, but the edge agent doesn't have mediator or anything else, and other party wants to communicate with that. Uh, the end result is pretty bad. And you see many times that DITCOM is compared for email. Email doesn't work like that. At least there is some mid mm, server in the road that says that what is going on and why, why they cannot reach other end. So uh, we took this approach that we have, uh, we first called it cloud agent, but now we can call it um, domain agent, identity domain agent even. And there's a couple of reasons that uh, you have to be able to support uh, public kits, uh, invitation if they are long-lasting ones and then you have to also maintain those uh, paperless connections and about the routing thing I has I have been figuring this out quite long that I really don't understand why they took the static routing approach because if you have tens of thousands or millions of these connections and we like OP have a are the organization and our setup is changing. We need other mediators and stuff like that. We have to update all the DIT documents. Uh, but yeah. But then uh, during this research work and everything, of, co of course, we try to find uh, other technologies. Then we did find FIDO2. And when we studied it and implemented something, we did learn that uh, it's, it's almost one-on-one -on -one what we did have with the DIT exchange when edge agent is making pairways to cloud agent. Only that difference that uh, these FIDO2 authenticators, they are passive device, so they don't need the uh, cloud agents public keys they give their own. And it's proven to pretty good approach. And it doesn't uh, exclude uh, native uh, clients at all. Actually, they suited that for well. And o of course, this year, some good news came around that, uh, okay, this is open source conference, but those big vendors, they have lots of influence. So they already solved for us the case that you lose your authenticators, all of them. And what happens? You can get to access your identity agent in our system now. Um, maybe I wrapped as my, my part. Uh, we have open sourced all the software. It wasn't... Uh, little job in the bank 
it actually was no enormous job but all the reports are public yeah, and you can for example cherry pick whatever you want from there uh, because we use the multi repo model which isn't very actually good for the go at the moment uh, go lang which has changed it a lot in last three, three years we might do something different but our solution is well documented uh, there is lots of samples and uh, all the docker images are public in the registry and as i said public uh, batteries are include so there is comprehensive tools for cli and uh, other which can be used for the start everything up yeah that was my part thank you yeah okay then a couple of words about our future before our time runs out <laughs> so uh, what next um, we would like to think that Findy agency is a platform that application developers can take and and like start building the credential uh, utilizing applications already now and not worry too much about the technology like the dirty w dirty technology like underneath but to keep the api quite stable and 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 so that the applications can can e uh, peacefully <laughs> concentrate to the to the real things to the real problems uh, and 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 for that we we intend to keep the api quite stable but uh, but on the other hand to explore more about the different uh, credential technologies because we know that Indy has its problems and and probably we want to go towards to the ledgerless uh, solutions we have started working already towards the uh, the other other technologies and and doing the did resolving things that were totally missing from the first version so these are the, the AIP 2.0, uh, W3C t um, credentials and BBS plus signatures. And, and, and uh, the DIT web method is probably something that we will concentrate in the near future. Of course, uh, we will also do some research in, in other areas that may or may not re result in, into the code additions to the FINDI agency. So we are... We know that there are uh, happening a lot or in those dark sectors that do not believe in DITCOM as, as we do. So, <coughs> so for, ex for instance, in Finland, we have this digital agency doing this um, wallet project that is based on this uh, SIOP extension for OIDC. So that is something that we are we are going to look into and also this Tor network and did onion stuff is is really really something that we we think that it's a good good match to this technology so so we we want to get into that more the first pilot cases we are still waiting <laughs> from the business uh, for them and but we of course realize that when when we uh, get our hands dirty with the actual use cases there will be needs that we we need to like implement more features and so forth to the FINDI agency and, and, and that also goes hand in hand with the performance and scalability um, needs. So, so that is something that we want to investigate more. Actually, we know that there in with Akapai there is this uh, load generator tool. We have a little bit of uh, like tried it out with the FINDI agency as well and, and that kind of work we want to continue in the future as well. Uh, so that was our presentation. I hope that you know now know a little bit more about Findy Agency and what it is. I rec recommend you to find out more. So join the fun, go to our website, read the documentation, blog posts, videos, and, uh, and most importantly, try it out. Install it to your local host and give us feedback, what is good, what is bad, and, and you can email us, uh, you can find us in Twitter and, and in LinkedIn. Thanks. Do we have any yeah, time for <laughs> questions? <laughs> any questions? Yes, please. Uh, 
unfortunately we don't have as Laura mentioned direct we, we are the research department and um, actually last year the other guys they really tried to find something they are a, maybe a couple of cases there's this um, um, what is the uh, document of attorney the, you give the rights to do some someone else can do Our yeah actually uh, exactly that yeah that is something that is uh, from table to table and then there is also interesting thing that's that uh, you could renew your uh, all the banks has those old they they call it strong authentication tools that you could use the, this technology to renew your your uh, I use authenticators but <laughs> they are the old authenticators yeah and we have been doing some some like playing around with ideas with the exactly like this chatbot uh, thing that that we showed that it would be a good thing to use like when negotiating a loan or or like uh, in the insurance cases when you need to like send documents to several parties and so forth but quite honestly uh, it, it we have been struggling to to explain this technology to the business <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I actually like tried out yesterday when you announced it that, and then I connec connected the uh, it with the wallet application. So, yeah. so there was something that BC Wallet. I, I think that it's waiting for trust ping or something like that. That it, it didn't okay. get the connection, but in on our end it works. So, I need to and dig into that world. Yeah, yeah. But, but basically, yeah. yeah. Okay, good. There was question there in at the back row. Yeah, yeah. please. Yeah, yeah, it was uh, Indi Indi was missing. Yeah, and <laughs> I, I, I th the, the timeline is also crucial here because we we started much earlier than those guys. Or at least we found the. Uh, uh, but actually, they, they it's, true. Really it's, the it's true. It's about yeah. half a year because we were b building uh, everything before the areas was existing, and then the, the summer we found out those specs and we started to follow them. But uh, yeah, that's true that very lately we started to uh, take parts from the Aries uh, Go framework. But actually before that, I, I have uh, read the code all the time. I have tried to keep myself uh, uh, like uh, in the day that what is going on. And, but uh, what could might be a good example? We have of course state machines for the protocol protocols you have to have to have those and they got uh, those guys has has have made their version and there's also transport layers and they are totally different and I don't think that this public knowledge but uh, frameworks are usually opinionated it's like the, we give the way how we call you back but the libraries are like that you can call us and we do the thing and um, our approach is this library approach and uh, it was very difficult to use the code framework that that is true yeah yeah I wouldn't use it in production <laughs> But the, mo the most importantly, I wouldn't use Indian pro production. That's my reason. Yeah, that but, that I, but I think uh, our, our code is quite, quite like good quality. So yeah. it's not dependent on that. My main concern is actually the ledger, the Indian ledger. Mm, there is something we have found during the tests. And um, mm, maybe there, there has been all the time some performance issues and uh, if we go that road uh, i don't like ditcom 
I think that there is flaws in it, and they try to fix something in version two, but um, like um, attack man in the middle attack, um, I don't know how well it's handled, but th it's so long discussion, so yeah. I don't go that road. Yeah, please. Uh, they are in the cloud, and uh, but we have uh, built a system like that that you could uh, because this agency you could uh, remove your wallet totally, and no trace is there, and like to switch the other agency. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the that's the what we have used. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. We yeah. haven't concentrated too much, but but like. Yeah, but but actually. In the background yeah. of our heads. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. But it was implemented at least, and we tried it, and it was uh, like this has been so long road that uh, because we weren't sure that we will throw edge agent away. <laughs> there was that point. We thought that we have to have that feature that you could. Uh, how I uh, explain this shortly. Uh, we run actually edge agent and cloud agent in cloud together and the reason was that you could took the um, edge agent's wallet out of the cloud and give it some order on uh, uh, setup so so and we tried that Yeah, actually, the, mm, that's the point that uh, you uh, we are not a mediator or anything like that. That you don't access the wallet uh, at the API level. Like uh, if you think the DIT controller, it uses our API, and there was this. Should I use? Everything you see here, uh, see here, it's like done in our API and our, mm, if someone wants to call it proprietary, they can. But uh, then when you start to communicate outside, mm, we are not support like uh, that you, you would use us as cloud agent and you would have other edge agent. If you're asking that, we are like, uh, supporting that case that uh, this is uh, your domain agent and you are con contacting and making those did compare some other entities and they can have uh, roads. But it's like, a, it's, it's a little bit different. I think that it's not, it's not following the same principles like, like for example, Akapai. Or Fivefold that mm. we saw yesterday that ha was having the mediator in the cloud and, and so forth. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned ledger list. I, you're using it on prem, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so you've implemented a, a, a way to uh, separate out. Yeah. Where so. The Yeah, so we have the, so Harry has written this in the Go wrapper, this kind of mechanism that you can replace, like the, you don't actually send the request to the ledger, but uh, we can store them in a file or a memory or what was the third one, ImmuDB. Yeah, yeah. Wha wha whatever data yeah. storage yeah. can be there. And there's there's one one hack only that uh, in, the lib uh, in the SDK, it accepts that uh, wallet handle can be minus one, <laughs> and then it doesn't uh, deal with it. Because you know that the API is, isn't perfect in the indie. So, uh, so that allowed us that uh, the, the second level code can, st can still think that it uh, talks to the indie yeah. SDK, but the uh, data storage can be whatever. So what we're trying to do is Yeah. And, and part of that is we want um, we're, we're trying to a bunch of these different tools and approach that here that are doing the same 
thing of just talking to other than Indians um, but still using an entree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no. So we may come to you to ask <laughs> how you're going to go well. All of you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can point us to some of the things because what, that's what we want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An entree entirely outside. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and actually it started for the help the developers because yeah. uh, it was so complicated to set up the dev Always dev the yeah, yeah. yeah, and uh, if actually if you go like to our startup scripts and start it the agency in your local host, it just uses the file ledger by default, so you don't have to set up any ledger. Okay. But you did it by just hacking the IDs. Um, not. More than hacking is right term, maybe reverse reverse engineering. <laughs> yeah, because uh, I just want to make sure because there is only two functions that take uh, both. Uh, this is very technical. Sorry, uh, take the connection handle and wallet handle, yeah. and one of them uh, it actually doesn't do anything. I, I checked the Rust code. Yeah. It doesn't do anything for the wallet handle, and other those does. But uh, it does it only certain mm, scenarios, and so it was safe to send the minus one for the wallet handle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned that you use the Indian Ocean. Um, Mainly the ledger. Yeah, yeah, yeah good, good answer, yeah. uh, Laura. <laughs> so, it's mainly, but but yeah. you have to s start somewhere, and and like, uh, I think that for instance that we have the, uh, pr brought this interoperability tests and so forth. Like in the picture, it has helped us a lot, like uh, doing the testing out the protocols and so forth. So you you have to have something, and 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 I I think that none of us will know uh, know now which will be the winning horse in the credential race, but you have to have something to build uh, like on top of, so. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Uh, okay, maybe it's this last question, but. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. No. Okay, I have to check it out, yeah. Okay, okay thank, thank you. you.